Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Frederick Zillen and I'm your running technique specialist. And today's episode is all about this. In this video I just wanted to share some test results from a runner I met today as he has booked an appointment to analyze his running technique and efficiency. I have already made another video on the same theme but since I have some additional information here I want to share it with you good people. And also a repetition is the mother of knowledge. As I said in other videos, there's a myth that overstride causes breaking forces. The further in front of your central mass you put your foot down, the higher the breaking forces. And yes, the risk of greater breaking forces increases when you land further in front of your central mass. But it's by no means a linear relationship. This is what it looked like for my client today. He landed very close under his central mass, only 13.1 millimeters, just half an inch. Or if you want to be precise and prefer to express it in the extremely awkward way of a fraction, 33 of a 64th inch. In any case, the runner had no overstride. But what did the braking forces look like? Were they higher or low? Well, they were increased. There were a lot of braking forces. And we can now compare this with a runner who lands 92.6 millimeters, 3.65 inches, which is the smaller dark blue arrow in this picture. But what about the braking forces for this runner who lands so much further in front of his body? Well, the braking forces were less. So it is not at all the case, as many runners say, that the further in front of your central mass you land, the higher the braking forces will be. For example, how your feet and knee moves matters a lot. Here you can see the differences between the two runners. The skeleton is the runner who landed very well under his central mass but had higher braking forces compared to the other runner who is the thin dark blue lines here. As you can see the feet and knees comes up higher on the runner who has low braking forces. The skeleton stops too early with the knee and then lets the foot and lower leg swing forward which creates a movement that in itself makes the foot come down under the central mass, yes, but at the same time has a forward movement which is probably the reason for the higher braking forces. The movement of the knee therefore has a major impact on braking forces. Besides the higher braking forces, the lateral forces were also considerably higher. The rating is one star as opposed to five stars for the runner that had less braking forces and landing a little further in front of the body. No, it does not cost more energy to run with feet and knees higher. It's all about relaxation and how to work the hip and I've already covered this in the video called lifting your feet higher costs less energy when running which now has over 1 million views. Check it out I'll paste a link to it in the description below. And if you want to know exactly how to do this I would recommend my online course where you learn exactly how to run as efficiently as possible so you can run faster and longer distances without costing any more energy while also reducing the risk of injury. And that's all for today. I just wanted to show you how much fun I have at work every day after about 10,000 tests since 2014 I have learned a few things and now you have too.
I really hope you liked that video and if you did you please click the like button and maybe also the subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos here on my channel and if you are interested in my online course you find all the information about that one in the description below